On the Ground, presented by The Cube. Here's your host, John Furrier. Hello everyone, I'm John Furrier with The Cube. We are on the ground here in Seattle, Washington for IBM's Open Cloud Architecture Summit. I'm here with Angel Diaz, who's the Vice President of Cloud Technology and Architecture at IBM. Great to see you. Great to see you. So we just had DockerCon for the past couple of days. Yes. Total Docker madness, but really that's the architectural play for the cloud. You guys are having a separate event here. Yes. Talk about your Open Cloud Architecture Summit. What's, sure. what it all about? What's it all about? Sure, look, you know, this is the fourth year where we've had this event. We do them in different cities, uh, maybe four or five times a year, right? We're doing them here in Seattle, coinciding with DockerCon. We have been trying to build, us with our partners in the industry, an open cloud architecture for the fast past four or five years. Think about it. Open hardware, something like open power, open compute storage and network with OpenStack, an open programming model for building applications quickly. People call that platform as a service. Cloud Foundry, containers, Docker. Open event-driven architectures with OpenWhisk, and then open APIs with things like the Open API Initiative. This has been something we've been doing systematically uh, for quite some time, and what's exciting about this event is that we bring together clients Okay, our clients, the people who are trying to implement this stuff, use this stuff, along with our leaders in open source and the actual open source leaders and industry luminaries, and we have great conversations, great debates, uh, and great feedback that help us steer this in the right direction. So I got to ask the question about uh, what you guys have been doing. Obviously, we've been following Bluemix. Whisk was a great announcement at Inter um, IBM Interconnect, fantastic. Right. Um, Compose I, all these kind of tools happening, but Bluemix has been accelerating very fast. So you guys have been <laughs> pedaling as fast as you can on the Bluemix side, yet the market, as we saw at DockerCon, is exploding with developers. How yes. are you guys balancing that? Because that's the question that everyone's asking is, okay, there's a moving train in the market requirements, yet you guys are building the technology really, really fast with Bluemix. What's the update? What's the current status? Yeah. Cloud, so, and how do customers react to you know, that? We are entering what I think of as Cloud 2.0, right? Everybody needs compute, storage, and network. We do that. OpenStack APIs provide that. We've got our, our data centers across the world, 46, 48 data centers across the world. You can access this anywhere, any geography. Bare metal or virtual machines, great. But now we're moving into time to value, speed. Speed is the currency. Whether you're building containers and building out microservices, whether you need to build systems of engagement applications using Cloud Foundry, or compose all these things in an event-driven architecture where you can really start to bring together services and build almost industry-specific clouds. That's where we're headed. Right? So the open source piece is a very interesting dynamic. We were just talking on theCUBE at DockerCon about the dynamic of the playbook of success. You get stuff out there, you grow, you build an ecosystem, and some, some proprietary or some unique advantage that suppliers would have for customers. Yeah. But that's the old way, and we were kind of saying, oh, Docker's got the playbook from VMware or other successful trajectories, if you will. But now open source is a big part of it, unlike previous successes in the past. Technically, you have that new balance. So how do you guys look at that? What are you guys doing? How do you leverage that open source component? Because you got open source, now you got cloud, then you got on-prem. Yeah. These are three main channels. Yeah, you know, look, we are living in a multi-cloud world. Uh, our objective is hybrid cloud, to make all clouds behave as one. So you want to have capability on-premise, because you want to be close to a transaction, you want to have capability off-premise. You want to connect those worlds across clouds. The only way to do that is with choice, with consistency. We did this back in the 90s. Right, when we helped create the Linux Foundation, we helped create Apache, when we helped create the HTTP server, right? So we kind of understand how to do that, we're trying to do it again, because that way clients can have this choice of consistency, build with an open architecture on-premise, be able to, whether it's compute storage and network, expand and contract, whether it's building in a polyglot world, their, their, their development organization, expand and contract. That has been our strategy, and that's what we're doing. And, and it seems to be working, because you, know, you come to these events, you know, look, if you look back, you know, we had a press release with Docker eh, two and a half years ago where we're going to be working the open together and create an open community. And now you've got 3,000 people here at this event. I was talking with Mariana Tesla, who's now running alliances and strategy for Docker. She was VP of engineering. There's more of a technical role now on the alliances because of the deeper integration requirement with Docker. And certainly Docker has their own agenda how they think the world should be. But you guys have a lot of clients that have been running compute and been doing computing for years and generations. How are your customers looking at the Docker world 
And how does that fit into the real world scenarios that you guys are building with customers? Because that's the question I get. How do I make sense of this Docker ecosystem? Yeah. I just want to get stuff applications out there fast and I want it on the cloud. What's, yeah. the, what's the IBM customer reaction to the Docker madness? What, what, what clients are asking is they're asking for an open cloud architecture and there are centers of gravity, okay? Which is the good news, right? There's lots of open source out there but there's open governance around centers of gravity. Open stack for compute storage and network. From that, you can build out a container layer reusing those elements. That's what we do in our cloud with Bluemix. We've got over 20,000 new developers a week joining up with Bluemix, right? Then you look at Cloud Foundry, you look at WISC, and you look at the APIs. Those are the centers of gravity. No matter where you start, if you want to use containers to help with your CI, CD pipeline, you're you know, building out your applications and then moving into a, a microservices world, we can do that, and then you expand out to other layers. If you do that, if you follow that architecture, you will be able to have choice of consistency, you'll be able to do it in a multi-cloud environment, and on-premise or off-premise, which is kind of the reality. Does Docker change the architectural equation in that open model, or does that accelerate the value for the customers? It, it, it accelerates value. Look, you know, we stood up two organizations last year. Uh, the Open Container Initiative, mm -hmm. to deal with Run C and some of the lower level things, and the Cloud Native Computing Foundation. Docker's part of both of that. Cloud Foundry is part of that. All, right. All of these constellations are working together so that we reuse the right elements of the architecture, and Docker's playing a big role in that, and, and as well as Lots of other people's. I love the open source political theater that goes on because there's a little job hand competition in some cases, but for the most part, open is open will always wins, and we've seen that success. You mentioned Linux and what IBM had experience in Linux, and at that time, that was a coalescing moment around Linux. People in the industry kind of pulled around Linux, and that was a forcing function for stability, but also growth, and that, that and the rest is history is well documented. What is that moment now? Is it Docker? What is that center that people yeah. are coalescing around? Is it microservices? Is it, it Docker? It, it, it what is, what are, is that moment? There are several centers of gravity. So there's been a lot of terraforming going on, right? <laughs> you think of this as stardust, and then the stardust comes together and it terraforms, right? Um, first one was OpenStack. If you think in those days, right? I mean, this was pre-foundation, pre-anyone, you know? Yeah. I walked in, had a conversation with buddies in Rackspace. We decided to join up, got a couple other people together. Six of us launched the OpenStack Foundation. I came back from Austin, 9,000 people at the OpenStack Summit, right? Uh, Cloud Foundry, we just had the summit there. Upwards of 3,000 plus at the Cloud Foundry Summit, right? Here you are at DockerCon, right? F three, 4,000 people. Uh, those are the centers of gravity. Cloud Native Computing Foundation at OSCON, I stood up on stage with my buddies from Google and we announced, the, and, and Jim Zemlin, and we announced to the world the Cloud Native Computing. Those are the coalescings that are happening around this architecture. It's multiple pieces, right? It's yeah. multiple pieces, uh, but these pieces are working well Are they together. unify or is this fragmented? How do you see that all kind of together? Oh, I, it, is, it is, again, that's why we're here. An open cloud architecture. It is all elements of a programming model that we're creating from the hardware. Don't forget open power all the way up. Open power's been a big success for IBM. Oh, it's, it's been for, for the industry. I yeah. mean, we've got Rackspace, Google, everyone involved in that. All the way up to how you expose things through an API, through Swagger, using the yeah. open API initiative, to where we're headed with a event-driven architecture and these industry clouds, right? So I got to ask, so ask you, you know, a lot of people will say, so the naysayers are, oh, this, all this, all this open foundations and this sad computing foundations, they're all kind of like, just marketing programs for the vendors, and it's just, they never ever be doing it. That's a historical view, some say that. What's different, and what can you say to those folks that will be out there saying, hey, just another foundation, it's just a, a, a land grab, or it's something that's just a, a posturing in the marketplace. How do you refute that to when people say, you know, these things are, are all hat, no cattle? What do you say to yeah. that? Well, I don't hear that often, <laughs> but for those who do say <laughs> that, uh, you know, you just look at the uh, activity, just look at the vibrancy. You know, we've got 400 developers on OpenStack, for example. That's yeah. quite the investment, right? We have literally dozens, you know, hundreds in Cloud Foundry, right? We've got, we've got developers on all of these things. And then also look at the people who attend these events. Yeah. It is not just the vendors that create product yeah. around it, but it's the end users. It's the end users, the clients. Yeah. They're really interested. And that's what's different. It's not your parents' open source world anymore. Back in the 90s when I was doing yeah. this at IBM Research, it was a bunch of academics. We were just having fun. Now, it's like, nope, we're having fun, but we're having fun with the end user. It's interesting, I mean, the perspective, I mean, I don't hear it very often, but it's mostly from the old data center guys that have lived through the client server, and they saw a lot of, you know, kind of proprietary stuff going on, that, that's gone, and my, my answer to that is, you know, we saw with OpenStack, you vote with the code, 
and that yeah. ultimately is the, is the key performance metric. So Open governance, meritocracy. Those are the keys to a good foundation and a good ecosystem. If you can get good code and you get good users. Yeah. The scoreboard doesn't lie with code, yeah. right? So, That's okay, right. with that, final question. What did you learn from OpenStack, and what did the industry learn from OpenStack and some of the early formational stuff that now a great seems question. to be hitting That's a stride? It's a, a great question. You know, and we announced this at the OpenStack Summit, and, 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 we did, and we took it, we did it first with Cloud Foundry, and that is interoperability. Interoperability is key. So what we're doing with RefStack, for example, and the challenge that we laid at the OpenStack Summit, and what we're going to show in Barcelona, interoperability, interoperability around containers, interoperability around Cloud Foundry, because that is necessary not just between our own product sets, right, whether it's on-premise or off-premise, but across the vendor landscape. That is the, the key lesson that I think we learned then and that we're doing now in all of these that will ensure that you get the choice with consistency, you deliver hybrid cloud, that you can run across geographies, that you can run across, across data centers and make all these clouds behave as one. Because at the end, it's all about the application, the business process. Right? You want to be able to compose and recompose your business process quickly. Final question, um, share with the folks out there what they can expect to see from IBM in the next coming years in terms of what you guys are going to do with the Open Cloud Foundation, IBM Cloud, what are you guys striving to be? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's a great question. You know, you are going to see us, you know, we, we have, we're doing great in Cloud 1.0, Compute Storage Network. Cloud 2.0, the platform. You know, you talked about Bluemix. Okay. I mean, you know, it is so exciting to see the eyes of the developer light up where they can not have to worry about the infrastructure, build out an application, and start being productive. 20,000 new developers a week. Now we're talking about uh, uh, industry-specific clouds where we take all of the services that we provide, our cognitive services, our, our weather data, our partnerships with Apple and Twitter and all the open source, we bring that together in a way that is semantically more relevant to the applications you're building. You start doing that, you go to cloud 3.0, which is time to value. Yeah. And, and you know, back in the days of the web, when we started that, I could not imagine, we did not fathom the world that we live in now. And now that the users are involved, our clients are involved, yeah. I can't fathom the It's an application the tsunami coming. Great, a lot of greatness. Angel Diaz here. We are here on the ground in Seattle for the IBM's Open Computing Architecture Summit. I'm John Furrier, watching theCUBE on the ground.